Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on the Daily Critique. Today's image was created by Chuck. Chuck recently created this image on the Mindful Eye's Grand Teton National Park Workshop. Chuck shot this with a Canon 5D Mark II, an effective focal length of 200 millimeters, and the exposure trio is ISO 100, f9.5, and one quarter of a second. First thing that I wanted to talk about today is something that's technical. This image is a partial abstraction and it's a partial motion blur. And Chuck is hand holding his lens here and using slight camera movement at one quarter of a second to come up with an image where in the lower part of the image you get a real strong sense of a literal subject and then as you move towards the back of the image there's more of a feeling of blur and more of a feeling of just the intrinsic ideas that are represented in this case color uh, and shape and quality of line. A lot of this kind of work um, has been produced in the last few years. Eddie Soloway and William Neal, very well known photographers, have created bodies of work using these techniques. There's a lot of information about this type of abstraction using camera movement. One of the things that I think happens for photographers is that we'll start at slower shutter speeds, one second, two seconds, or three seconds, and move the camera a lot. One of the things I want to encourage you to try today is shorter shutter speeds and camera movements that are more subtle. Try a lot of different variations. Both approaches can work, but one of the things that I think is really powerful when it comes to design is the idea of partial abstraction. So it's the concept of the viewer being able to get visually grounded and the literal idea but within the same um, piece of artwork to have some areas that are not literal. It really helps to create a lot more depth potentially from an emotional psychological standpoint as a storyteller. So just really encourage you to think about sh shorter shutter speeds for these kinds of techniques. A quarter of a second, an eighth, or a fifteenth in more subtle camera movement. In working at these shorter shutter speeds you can also try a lot more variations of movement and each movement that you make is not only going to have a different effect, it's potentially easier to reproduce because you're only using a short type of movement. You can remember the way that you move the camera versus potentially a lot of different movements over the course of a longer shutter speed, like one second or two seconds or even longer. The other thing that I wanted to talk about today in the video is the idea of color theory. Um, one of the amazing things about Chuck's image is that he's working with a lot of color here, but color to me is showing up in a simple way, in a graphic way, and color relationships are really helping to move my mind's eye through the image in an ordered way. So let's talk about a couple of color theory ideas. One of the really beautiful things about this image is it essentially represents almost all of the hues that we would find on the printer's color wheel, excuse me, the painter's color wheel, and also sort of in order of those colors. We start down here with the blue, move into greens, then yellows and oranges, and uh, finally reds, and then a touch of violet at the top part of the image. If we look at a painter's color wheel, you can see that it's doing the same thing in the same order. Moving from blue to blue-green, green to yellow-green, moving into yellows, oranges, and reds, and ultimately violet. And the other thing uh, about Chuck's image, because he's basically showing us all of the hues um, of the color wheel, and in that order, but some of the colors are dominating. We get a real strong sense in the design here of two pairs of complementary colors. Blue playing off of the feeling of orange and red playing off of the, uh, excuse me, green playing off of the feeling of red. And when it comes to color design, if you want to work uh, with a lot of colors, um, just really encourage you to try and be more conscious about color and their relationships and a very powerful design motif in either painting or photography would be the idea of two complementary color pairs um, like Chuck is representing here in his image. I just want to show you this slide for a second. It's a slide from a presentation that we present on all of our workshops. Just some ideas about color that might help you uh, to work with a very complicated subject matter in artwork color. There are billions of colors, all kinds of color relationships that are possible. Here are some things that you might do uh, to uh, help keep color under control. Limit the number of colors. Be aware of color relationships. Shapes are colors and colors are shapes. 
and then separation of color. Another really powerful thing about Chuck's image is that even though he has a lot of color ideas here, they're showing up in a very simple way in terms of shapes. You really have these bands of color ideas that are moving through the image, playing back and forth uh, off of each other. The other thing that I wanted to mention that might not be obvious from just looking at the photograph itself, not uh, having the backstory information or having been there when Chuck was taking the picture, there's so much color in this image, maybe really hard to understand that this area of color in the image is actually uh, from light. So the grasses are not changing color here. The color of the light is changing. This um, is an area of very early morning sun, very warm, it's cutting across the grasses and dramatically changing the way we perceive the color of it in Chuck's photograph. Another thing that I wanted to mention is just trying to remember that photography is so much about light, starting with the idea of light. Uh, what is the right light for the subject that you're shooting and being motivated um, by light? This image without uh, that beam of light is cutting through the middle of it from a color standpoint uh, would be a lot less interesting and it really was the light that motivated Chuck in the first place uh, to take this picture. The other thing that I wanted to mention in this image is just continuing to push the idea of when you're shooting to uh, try to come up with literal and abstract versions of your scenes particularly if you're a landscape photographer. I'm going to show you another really beautiful image here that was created by Wes on the workshop to give you an idea of what was just to the right of this shot um, a little bit earlier in the morning. So this is a location in Teton National Park called String Lake. There are other lakes here, very physically dramatic, very easy to be drawn into these kinds of shots. There's nothing wrong with these kinds of images, but, images, but they're mature subjects and mature subjects can immediately put the viewer of your image uh, in their own mind of comparing your work to other people's work or it becomes something that is very specific to them relative to story and just turning to the left and shooting the area of the lake it's just forming the border of the lake and wetlands areas uh, Chuck is moving away from the literal is paying a lot more attention to things like light and color this is a scene that could um, be a place that anybody has been to so it can be something that's a lot more personal for the viewers so just trying to continue to um, encourage you to think about different variations of scenes that you're shooting particularly when you're working mature subjects trying to come up with fresh ways of seeing them new ways of seeing them or ways uh, to abstract them uh, for the viewer I want to say a big thank you to Chuck for sharing this image with us big thank you to all the people who participated on our Teton National Park Workshop Hope everybody has a great weekend.